you are going to be an overcomer, like I said, you have to overcome self first. Self is the person a Christian needs to overcome. You don't need to overcome anybody else but self. When you overcome self, you're, you're progressively going forward for Christ. Self. If you do not crucify self, hear me, if you don't crucify self, self will crucify any Christ that there is in you. If you have any little bit of Christ in you, you don't crucify that self. You let flesh, self, do what it wants to do. It's going to crucify any bit of Christ that dwells within you. Then you're just going on the motions, friend. You're calling yourself a Christian. You learn how to raise your hand. You learn how to say amen. You learn how to flip a coin in the plate. You learn how to do a lot of these things. You learn how to be religious. But yet you're going in the flesh. You're still going. You're, when you're still doing all these things, when you haven't learned to crucify the flesh through the Holy Spirit and allow God to work in you, friends, you're just going on the motions. You're going on fumes. And, friends, you're going nowhere when that roll is called up yonder. Hello? Yeah, are you being judgmental? No, I'm not. I'm just preaching you the Word of God, whether you like it or not. That's what God called me to do. I wish to God I was able to preach to thousands and thousands and thousands of people that they might hear this Word, that they might turn from their wicked ways and turn to the living Christ, that they might be saved. You know, if, you know, I, I said, if you don't crucify self, self's going to crucify you. Paul, uh, self wants to, to do only what is convenient for self and please self. That's all self wants to do, the things that please self. Self wants to do it. You know, Paul stated, who will deliver me from the body of this death? You know, Paul knew that that old fleshly carnal man, that old fleshly man was going to would destroy him. He said, who's going to deliver me from the body of this death? He, Paul knew the fleshly carnal nature of man would destroy him spiritually unless he put him in check. He said, the things that I want to do, he said, I don't do. Any things that I shouldn't do, he said, I do. He said, oh, wretched man that I am, who's going to deliver me from the body of this death? He knew only Christ, only God, only the power of the Holy Ghost. At spending time in prayer and fasting and seeking after God, that's the only thing that was going to help him to make heaven. You know, Paul said, Paul could have, he could have went by the wayside. He said, he said, you know, he said, lest I preach to others. You know, find myself to be a castaway. He said, I'm not going to get into heaven just because I'm Paul. He said, I'm only going to get into heaven because I'm continuing to attain this book and walk uprightly before him. I'm going to attain this gospel in my, in my living being and be like Jesus Christ. He said, that's the only thing that's going to get me a ticket into heaven. Hello? I'm by just calling me a Baptist, a Methodist, a Pentecostal or anything else or saying my name's on this roll here or saying that I'm a Christian. That's not going to get you in heaven. The only thing that's going to get you the ticket to heaven is walking uprightly and holy before him. That's all there is to it, whether you want to believe it or not. You can call yourself anything and split hell wide open. Hello? The I in the word sin stands for indulging, indulging in wrongful activities, wrongful doing, whatever you want to call it, indulgence. We indulge in everything but what we should be indulging. We need to indulge in God's holy word. Indulge that and get that into us. You know, indulging in gambling and lotteries. People think there ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, I'm just trying to better myself. You know, the Bible speaks about like a bag with holes in it. You know, you play the lottery, and that's like a bag of holes. You never win, but you just keep playing. You don't want to give God any money. You don't want to give God any money to keep the lights on in the church. You don't want to give God any money to keep missionaries on earth. You don't want to help the poor, whatever, you know, but, you, but you'll play that lottery. You'll pump money, 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 money into the lottery. You'll pump all kinds of money for yourself, but you don't want to give God nothing. Amen. You don't want to give God a minute of time in prayer. You don't want to give God anything. You know what, friend? You're out of this thing without it. You need to spend time in prayer with God. You need to spend time with God alone. You need to give God your best. You know, we indulge in all kinds of indulge in those things that are harmful to the temple. We indulge in all kinds of things. There's people in, in churches. They, they, have, they have their cocktails in the cocktail hour. I heard of a Pentecostal uh, church that went on a cruise. You just drink a little bit of champagne or whatever. You know, friend, what is, you know, here, they're, they're supposed to be a, set an example for those sinners that are around them. They're watching, they ain't that, then they're saying, they ain't no different than I am. You know, they're, they're having their, their toast. It was only a glass full of champagne. My word, friend, I don't want no, I'm going to drink the new wine of the Holy Spirit. That's what I want. I don't want no champagne, and I don't want no anything that's like, like this one. I don't want no part of this one. I want everything that God has for me. I want his, the word that glory runs out the spout where the glory runs out. I want him and everything of it. I don't want any part of this world and it's a uh, false, fake entertainment. Everything that, everything that the devil has is a counterfeit. Everything that he has is a counterfeit. He, has, he get drunk on booze. 
You know, because it's a counterfeit of getting drunk in the spirit. You know, I'd rather get uh, overwhelmed and drunk in the spirit of God because I'll wake up and never have a hangover. I'll wake up and I'll still have my money in my pocket. Hello? I still, I'll still have my job when I go to work because I'm lost because I don't go to work for, not, for, for drinking too much. Let me tell you something. We're moving on. The letter N in the sin word stands for neglect. Christians neglect their relationship with God. I'm too busy to pray, read the Bible, go to church, spend time with God. They neglect their relationship with God, but yet they don't neglect the flesh. They don't neglect their self. They do whatever they want to do and keep on doing it, yet they call themselves a Christian. Are you an overcomer or an overcomer, friend? Measure yourself up to the Word of God. What I'm saying today, you may find yourself to be an overcomer and be out of this thing. When that trumpet blows, you might wonder, why on earth didn't I go? Why on earth? Because you've been overcome and deceived by the devil. Friend, it's going to take a holy, righteous walk with God in order to make it out of this thing. Let me tell you something. I don't think we have too long before things are winding up and winding down, and he's coming for his few elect. You know, you say, oh, you, you're just calling yourself that you're one of the only few elect. No, friend, I'm like Paul. I have to crucify this flesh daily. I have to get it on my face because it's so wretched. That old wicked, evil man tries to rear his head up. That uh, old man, I have to hit him down with the club of the Bible. I have to knock him down with the word of God. I have to get on my face before God and weep and cry and pray and seek God to help me lest I fall by the wayside too. I'll preach to you and be lost out unless I get on my face before God. And that's just the way it is. The writer in Hebrews 2, 3 made a profound statement. He said, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation when it at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? How are we going to escape if we neglect so great a salvation that's in this book, like he said, that was first exampled, exemplified by Christ and then spoken by the prophets and by, and by the apostles. How are we going to escape unless we follow after their footsteps? We won't. You know, I'm going to be closing. You know, the disciple, the, the, the discipline you walk, be diligent. Don't let self be disciplined. Be diligent. Don't let self overcome you. Walk in the Spirit, and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. And you will not fulfill that lust when you walk in the Spirit. Secondly, don't indulge or involve yourself in matters that are contrary to God's Word. Don't just, don't try to justify everything and anything that you do. You know, you know people, we, you know, we can, rational, we can rationalize anything. You know, we can say, well, God understands, and He knows I'm human, and... You know, we can rationalize almost anything. We don't let, that's just all deception. If it ain't of God's holy word, friend, you're in trouble if you're doing it. You can rationalize anything, but you better measure it up to God's word. You know, and last, don't neglect your relationship with God and just serve him when it is convenient. Let him reign in all aspects of your life. Let God reign supreme in your life. Revelation 2, 7, the Spirit states, He that has an ear, let him hear. What the Spirit saith unto the churches, to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise. He said, to him that overcometh. Not to those that are fallen down by the wayside, but to him that overcometh. Is he going to allow to eat of that tree of life? Not everybody's going to partake of that. Only those that are overcomers. Only those that have allowed the Holy Spirit to help them through. Not those that have rationalized with all the, the reasoning of this world and just do whatever the world wants to do to what other churches are doing. Friend, you better do what this holy book says. If it says it's wrong, there's not only thou shalt, but there's thou shalt not. Friends, you better do what God's holy word says or you're out of this. You know, I don't want to be left behind, friend. And it's going to be soon, friend. And you shall be left behind if you're not following this holy book. There's a whole lot of deceivers and deception out there, friend. And a lot of people are being deceived. The churches at one time we went to where the altars were wet with tears. They don't longer have the altars anymore. You know, and, and the preachers... They don't no longer preach from the pulpit up anymore. They got to be down here with their flat screen and then the jumbotron and, and all this. And they got to have all this stuff to stimulate, all this stuff moving in the background to stimulate. But I tell you, that's not what. Are you an overcome? Are you an overcomer? No one is going to partake of that tree that has not been an overcomer of this flesh first.